Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am happy, of course, to be with you to share another author interview. I hope your week is going well. I hope you had a great weekend. Our guests left. All of the guests have now departed, which is both sad and also um Is it bad to say it's a relief? It's not a relief in that because I miss them. But it's a relief in that, you know, like, somewhat normal life can now resume. It was great having them here. We did so much and spent wonderful, wonderful time with everybody and went lots of places and ate great food and did all the things that you do when visitors are here. But as an introvert, it's always a little bit of a relief when people, when people are gone and I can, um, I can stop being quite so extroverted. Hubby is a extrovert all the way. He loves it. He, it's his favorite thing in the whole world. But, um, that was our weekend was just spending a little bit more time with the friends. It rained like crazy here. I felt so bad for our, um, California and Texas guests because they booked an ATV tour on Sunday and it just poured, just poured. So their entire trip was rain and cold and mud and it was three hours long <laughs> and they were told, no problem. We've got coverings and, and it's more fun in the rain and it made it makes for a very good story they they're laughing about it now but they were cold i don't think it was i don't think it was exactly what they were hoping for no i know it wasn't exactly what they were hoping for but they were good sports about it so um i did not go on that particular outing i stayed home and um snuggled in bed it was it was it was better <laughs> for me personally but anyway that that is a brief rundown of a few things that have been going on and now back to regular life and um just the usual so so that's pretty much it from from me but what's been going on with you what have you been up to what have you been reading you know i'm nosy i always want to know these things so uh let me know what you have been up to in the meantime, of course, let's have an interview. <laughs> I am speaking today with uh, Sheetal Shah, who wrote a book of poetry called Shakti Girls. It is a book of poetry dedicated to the lives of Indian women. Let me go ahead and give you the description of the book. Um, Captivating biographical poems come to life in a world of exploration and fun. This delightful book, perfect for ages kid, for kids aged five and above, weaves together 13 compelling biographies with engaging rhymes that kids will absolutely love. Meet these trailblazing women who made a big impact. Kalpana Chawa, the, she soared among the stars, the first Indian woman to explore space. Indra Nooyi, with a heart full of ambition, she led PepsiCo to success as the very first Indian woman. Asha Bosley, her melodies were like magic, earning her the title of the first Indian Grammy winner. But that's not all. From Mindy Kaling, who's known around the world, to the brave freedom fighter Kasturba Gandhi, you'll discover the stories of incredible Indian women from all walks of life. They've shown that girls can do anything, whether it's in science, sports, politics, or and more. These women's stories aren't just told, they're sung in rhymes that make learning exciting and, under, and unforgettable. And guess what? You'll find empowering words in Hindi to make you feel strong and confident, too. Plus, there's a bilingual glossary on every page, so nothing will stop you stop your reading adventure. But wait, there's more. Dive into engaging reflection activities and games that let you connect with these heroines in a whole new way. Learn about their passions, challenges, and triumphs as you discover your inner power or Shakti. 
And so again, that is the description of Shakti Girls. It is 13 poems about Indian women, um, some of them born and raised in India, some of them living elsewhere, some names you may have recognized from the few descriptions that uh, were included. Um, for instance, I knew about uh, Indira Gandhi. I knew, uh, I, I've heard of Mindy Kaling, right? I've heard of Kamala Harris. You've probably heard of some of these as well. But there were other women that I had not heard of or maybe knew the names but didn't know much about. So it gave me a a brief introduction to each of these women. And the book is just beautiful. We're going to talk a lot about this. And I'm going to fangirl throughout this interview because there's so many wonderful things about this book. It is so beautifully illustrated. And it just gives you a glimpse into women's lives. Women who you may or may not have heard of. Maybe women that you would like to know more about. And maybe you have um, children in your life that you think you would like to read this book with and introduce them to some amazing women. So um, I'm going to continue fangirling because that's going to go on in the interview, but I'm going to stop talking right at this very moment so that we can do that interview and then the fangirling will continue as I talk to Shito. So let's go ahead again. The book is called Shakti Girls and let's turn now to that interview. Hello, Shito. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me on. It's great to be here. I am well, and I am very happy to have you here. I'm very excited to talk about the book, which is a book of poetry. Um, Before we get to that, though, I would love if you would share just a little bit about yourself so my listeners can get to know you a bit. Sure. Um, My name is Sheetal Shah. I am a former teacher turned author writer. I taught at um, girl schools as a world studies teacher um, for about um, 15 years, um, both in New York City and in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I currently live, um, before I reconnected with my love for writing, um, a hobby that I tucked away for a long time, um, believing that um, the world of writing didn't you know, have a space for someone like me and the stories that I've been wanting to share. Um, so my parents immigrated from India in the United to the United States back in the 1970s. And so I was born in the US. I grew up as a second generation Indian or Indian American. And so a lot of my upbringing growing up in the US as an Indian American, um, my career then as an educator, and now as, as a mom to the next generation, um, a lot of all of those things really inspired me to write um, my book. And so, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And actually, even from that introduction, I can see so much of your story and history in in this book, um, which is wonderful. And since we're talking about it, and people may or may not know what we're talking about, the book is called (laughs) Shakti Girls. Can you give an overview of it? Sure, sure. So Shakti Girls is a picture book. Um, It's a middle grade picture book, but I know um, many women, adults, families that are enjoying the book just as much as um, uh, children are. It's a compilation of biographical poems about remarkable women from India, um, women with Shakti. Shakti means like your inner power, your inner force or energy, and it can manifest in a lot of different ways, right? Through talent, through ambition, through your intelligence, through your compassion and love for others. And so these women that I've written about in this book, you know, through their passion and their talents and their ability to make a difference in this world, they've um, demonstrated their own inner Shakti. And so the the women in this book, they represent the diversity of India um, and its diaspora. Um, so, you know, they're from different parts of India. They grew up speaking different languages, different religions. Some were born and raised in India, some immigrated to other parts of the world, and some were born and raised um, in the U.S. or in the U.K. or, you know, and raised by parents um, who immigrated from, from India. And it was important to me that I captured the different generations um, because knowing that, you know, there is this vast and deep 
history of um, Indian diaspora and immigration. And so I know having that was important for readers to be able to connect and be inspired by these stories. And so, um, so the, the, po- the stories are written in poems, they're written in rhyme. Um, and uh, that was, you know, very much influenced by my, my background in education. There's so many things that I love about this book. Um, one of them is the diversity of the women that you chose in that even I, as someone who grew up in the U.S. and is was still able to recognize many of the women in the book, and then some of them were new. But I think most people are going to at least recognize a few of the women. Was it hard to choose which women to, which women to feature? Yeah, it was. It was really hard. Um, it took me a long time to figure out, um, like, so as I started to do the research for this book, I discovered that there were so many remarkable women then and now, um, connected to India with Indian roots that I could write about. And I just, I remember thinking, where was this story when I was a child? I needed this story. I needed her to inspire me, you know. But here I am in my adult life reading these stories, feeling such inspiration, giving me the confidence to write this book. And so now I've got this list of like 40 women from different industries who've done remarkable things, each in their own unique and innate way. Um, and how do I pare this down? And, you know, one of like the, the first things I knew I had to do was make sure I had representation of women from different industries. And that was really important to me because, um, I, I wanted for, I wanted children, um, to realize that they can follow their passion. They can follow, you know, uh, what their interests are. And, and, and be able to make a difference, you know, being true to who they are, being true to their authentic self, and that they were all born with this unique gift, this unique Shakti, right? And so, um, instead of having to fit a mold or, you know, feeling this pressure to, I have to do this because this is what society is telling me, you know, that people like me should do, I wanted to build a book where children can be like, oh, I I can follow writing. I can do the arts. I can be a teacher or a politician. There is, you know, space for me to follow um, those interests um, that I have. So that was the first thing, you know, is I needed women in this book to rep, you know, to represent a variety of industries. So we have athletics, politicians, we have artists, um, actors, um, you know, CEOs. And so really capturing that was important to me. And then from there, you know, kind of categorizing and sorting all the women that I've researched, I also went to my family. I went to my parents, you know, who, you know, grew up in India for most of their life before coming to the U.S. And I asked them without looking at my list, you know, from your childhood, you know, from your, you know, um, knowledge, you know, who, who were the, the women in history that really stood out to you that you still remember? And so, um, I remember my parents saying, Oh, Shakuntala Devi is a really pr- a prominent person in India's history. She was, you know, a mathematician and, you know, defied all kinds of stereotypes and, you know, came out of, um, uh, uh, you know, was born in poverty and, and found her way th- by, you know, following her, you know, uh, her gift and her, her natural passion for mathematics, um, and is a Guinness Book World Record breaker. Um, and so it, it was actually through my parents, I learned about her. And so that was, you know, another way I was able to kind of pare down the lists or asking children, asking family members and friends. And then I also thought about, you know, who were the women that inspired me, you know, on a personal level. And there was one person in particular, Jhumpa Lahiri, that insp- I remember reading. Uh, I read her book, and um, uh, Interpreter of Maladies and Namesake, when I was a senior in high school. And she was the first, um, the first South Asian author that I had seen on the shelf of a bookstore 
And that was really the first time where I, I saw, you know, saw myself in the pages of a book and saw myself represented in her stories. And that had a profound impact on me. And so, um, it was important to me that I included a little bit of myself in, in who I selected in, in the women, um, in this book. Now that you know a little bit more about Sheetal and about this book, Shakti Girls, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of this episode. When we come back, we'll talk more about the inspiration behind the writing of this book and the poems and the women involved. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. As you know, I am speaking today with Sheetal Shah about her book of poetry, Shakti Girls. Let's go ahead and return to that conversation. And that's one of the things that I so appreciate about the interviews that I do for this podcast is I've met so many authors who now are able to bring books to life that they didn't have growing up. You know, they you you didn't necessarily see yourself represented in the books that you that you read. Um, and so I love that you are not only doing that, but also, you know, young women can see themselves in the book, in this book, but they're also learning history and learning about women who did amazing things. Um, what was your initial inspiration to just sit down and, and compile the list of women you wanted to do and, and make this book? So I, um, the, my inspirations are to write this book. I mean, they, they're, they come in layers. <laughs> there are so many aspects of my background that really pushed me to write this book and inspired me to write this book. You know, you mentioned my childhood, right? And, um, that had a huge part in why I wrote Shakti Girls, you know, you know, the not seeing or knowing about many of these Indian women, these trailblazers growing up. You know, I didn't learn about Indira Gandhi until later in high school. And even then it was maybe like a line or two in my textbook. Um, Kasturba Gandhi was another woman I, I didn't know about until a couple of years ago. And she's the wife of Mahatma Gandhi, you know, prominent freedom fighter Indians for India's independence movement. And many of um, the I- ideas and philosophy or approach that Mahatma Gandhi took to um protesting against British rule actually was inspired by his wife, by Kasturba Gandhi. And I, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know that women had such a prominent role in that movement until a few years ago. And so realizing this now and, you know, looking back on my childhood, you know, I, I've wondered, you know, what, you know, how, what sort of impact would it have had on me? Um, if I had known this, you know, growing up in the U.S., would I have found my voice sooner? Would I have um, developed a, a stronger sense of self and confidence earlier? Um, would I have spent more time embracing my interest in the liberal arts instead of feeling this pressure to fit a mold when when I was younger? And so I, I often think about the quote um, by by Billy Jean um, King um, on the importance of being able to see it to be it. Um, and so I, I didn't really realize what all my career options were at a young age when there are so few laid out for me. And so knowing what that, remembering what that felt like and what that experience 
was like, having very little representation that I could connect with or relate to was a huge driver in writing this book. Um, and then later becoming an educator at a girls' school, both in New York and Atlanta, um, serving, you know, a diverse student body and realizing through both practice um, and experience um, the value of a curriculum that reflects the, the identity, the diversity, the gender of the students that I'm teaching and what impact, profound impact it has on their sense of belonging and their self-esteem. Um, I remember <laughs> when I was in college, um, towards the end of, you know, I think it was my junior, end of junior year or senior year, I took a course that was related to my minor. Um, and the course was on South Asian diaspora. And that was the first time I took a course that where I felt like my story, my family's history, our experience, my parents' experience as, as immigrants, my experience growing up in the U.S. Um, was part of a curriculum, was part of a the larger story in history of America. You know, it was really the first time I felt seen. Um, I felt, um, I felt like I was, you know, part of something important. And remembering that experience, um, you know, was was critical in helping me understand as an educator how important it is to make sure I include as much as I can um, material that reflects, you know, the diversity of my students and and their identities. And I remember in that course, I found myself more motivated, more academically engaged because I could connect to the course. And that wasn't, and that's not just true for me. You know, there's research that shows that, you know, academic engagement increases when there's more inclusion and diversity and curriculum. And so as a teacher, I remember trying to find materials and readings to bring into the classroom. Um, that reflected my students and also bringing in my own personal history and identity to the curriculum and often find, felt falling short. And so, and realizing that there is sort of, there is a diversity gap in children's literature. There is a diversity gap in, in educational materials that, you know, teachers can bring into the classroom. And so I wanted to do something about that as well. Um, and then I would say, you know, becoming a mom. Um, really put pressure on me to tap into my dormant creative side and start writing, you know, um, going, you know, into the pandemic, um, in lockdown, you know, I was reflecting a lot and really missing my creative outlets and, um, writing and writing poetry, something I did a lot as a child. Um, and so, and having, you know, raising two boys, um, asking questions about their identity, um, really, you know, compelled me to write Shakti Girls, you know, and, and raising two boys, you know, I felt even more of an, um, responsibility to expose them to these stories of these, you know, remarkable women and helping them grow up and with this, you know, understanding, um, that of what women are capable for, capable of. Absolutely. And um, one thing that I appreciate is that as a history major in high, in college, I love history, but reading history can sometimes be mind-numbingly boring. So <laughs> what, what I love about the book is that the illustrations are beautiful, the poems are accessible, they're easy to read, and if they inspire any young reader to then do their own research and find out more about any of these women or even look into other other people in history. I think that would be amazing. Was that one of your hopes for what this book might might do for readers? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and to talk about, I, I have to, when I hear um, about the, when I talk about the rhyme, I have to give credit to my younger son, who was the inspiration about the the rhyming component of the poetry. You know, he, I, you know, as a history teacher, I, I love bringing, bringing biographies into my house. I love exposing them to stories of, of brilliant, who've done remarkable things in the world. And I remember my younger son, who was, I believe he was like six or seven, six at the time. He was like, mom, you know, I, you know, and he's one of my staunch supporters. Um, he said, he's like, mom, you know, can you please write the stories in a way that's like fun to read? And I looked at him like fun to read. What, what do you mean? And then he was like, you know, and he said something like, you know, like, like Llama Llama. And I, and then I'm like, Llama Llama. So I'm like reading through Llama Llama, one of his favorite books. And, and then I started reading through some of the other books that he loves so much, um, at home, some of, you know, picture books. And I realized he likes the sing songy sound of the way these books are, are written and the rhyme with the, I was very much inspired by how the rhymes were written in Dr. Seuss. And so, and then I started thinking about, well, of course, I know as an educator, rhyme is a great pedagogical strategy to boost long-term memory. It's fun to read, it's engaging, but the brain actually loves rhymes. It makes it easier to remember things. And so I have to give a shout out to my son for, you know, giving me, you know, the push to think about how I can capture these biographical stories in a way that's engaging for children to learn. I love that. And I love that it was Llama Llama, um, mostly <laughs> because I have seen, a, I don't know if you've ever seen the YouTube video of uh, the rapper Ludacris rapping Llama Llama. <laughs> I have. I love it. <laughs> oh <my fabulous. laughs> I love it so much. And my husband keeps telling me, he's like, I'm going to rap one of your poems, Sheetal, and I'm going to post it. And I haven't stopped him. I think he just, I think he keeps forgetting. But I, I, yeah, he's like, I'm going to do it one day. I'm like, these are totally rappable. You should do it. Please, if that ever happens, send me a link. I want, (laughs) I need to hear that. I will. I will. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of like the way, like I wrote, like, created the book was like the educator in me and like, how can I make this fun? You know, there's like the hidden object activities with each illustration and the reflection at the end. Um, but I, I wanted like readers to be part of, part of the experience in reading the book um, and engaging like all the different ways they can think about um, what they're reading and learning. Yeah, yeah, and even as a middle-aged woman, I I did all the find the picture exercises in each picture just because it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for our second break of this episode. But hey, when instructions in a book tell me to do something, then I'm going to go look for the things that it tells me to look for. I'm very good at following directions, and it was entertaining. So hey, there you go. We are going to take that second break of this episode when we come back more about the poems themselves, and some of the Hindi words that are included in the poetry. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my conversation about the book of poetry, Shakti Girls. I'm speaking, as you know, with author Sheetal Shah. Let's go ahead and return to that interview. To the rhyming nature of the, the poems, you also include um, at least one Hindi word in every poem. Um, can you talk about deciding which words to use and, you know, the importance of including those words and their definition below the poems? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. So, um, so every poem has a Hindi word embedded into the poem. And, um, I decided to do that because I wanted readers to walk away with whether it's an introduction to the language or, you know, they're building on their understanding of the language with words that you know, that are empowering, that are positively affirming. Um, so words like clever or passion. Um, I wanted them to build a, a vocabulary of Hindi words that could also be used as a, like as part of an affirmation statement to help uplift their confidence and their self-esteem. And I remember um, while I was, you know, I, I would write the poems first and then I would go in and look and see what's a word here that I, I want them, I want readers to remember and that I could translate in Hindi without messing up the syllable count for each line. Um, so it, was, it could get a little complicated at times, but it was really important to me that there was a word that was positive, self-affirming, um, and that they could learn in a different language. You know, growing up, I learned um, Gujarati was our, you know, was the language that I grew up speaking in addition to English. Gujarati is, you know, a, a dialect, a language, one of the, the many languages of India. And, uh, you know, I can speak it, you know, somewhat fluently, but um, these uh, these were like self-affirming positive words were not part of my vocabulary when I was young. And so I think, you know, if, if I had learned some of these words too, you know, when I was younger in another language, it's just a, a beautiful way to, you know, boost your self-esteem to, you know, encourage, you know, someone's more positive outlook or inward look of themselves um, while learning another language, it's it's another beautiful way of learning another language. Absolutely, and it it sounds like you put so much thought into every aspect of the book. Um, how much research did you actually do for each poem? Quite a bit, you know. Um, I definitely did a lot of um, online research. Um, I would start there, especially if there were women that were. Um, sort of un, unheard of or, you know, you know, where it was kind of difficult to find books um, about. So I, I would start online. Um, if there were books about any of these women, I would grab their books. I would read. Um, if there were podcasts or interviews um, or articles, I would read those as well. And then I would try to find consistent stories um, in all of those sources, you know, fact checking everything as much as I could. I, I remember I would sometimes wake up in the middle of the night in panic that I got like a date wrong. Um, so like making sure the content was accurate was, was really important to me. So really not falling short on the research. And so, um, and, and also making sure that whatever information I included in the poems was publicly available as well. Um, and so, and so, yeah, I definitely took a lot of time in doing the research. There was, you know, I would start off my research with specific questions that I had about every woman, you know, what was her early life like? Um, and, th and this is something I did in the classroom as well. Ac actually, a lot of how I taught my students to do research and to conduct long projects um, that solved a real world problem, um, I used in developing this book. And so for the research, I started off with, you know, what are my the questions that I have about these women? And then going into the research and find, you know, finding those answers um, to those questions. So questions like, what was her early life like? Um, what was her family like? What was her education? What were some, um, what were her ambitions? 
Um, and then what challenges did she face? You know, that was a question, you know, I definitely wanted answered for every woman, um, cause they all have stories of resilience and hardship, something they had to overcome. And then I wanted to capture how did she overcome that solution? And then what was her long lasting legacy and impact? Um, and then really, and then my final question would be really more for myself. Like, what is the greatest takeaway from this woman's, you know, life and achievements that we could all relate to? And I wanted to make sure that was part of the poem as well. Um, towards the end, like, you know, what, what the biggest takeaway is, how can we apply lessons from her life and, uh, apply it into our own? And so, yeah, having those questions and then doing the research and filling in with those questions with answers um, was a really helpful process for me. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, Absolutely. Do do you want to do another volume of this poetry? Because I know there's more women than what are included. Yeah. I mean, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> um, yeah. So I actually, I am in the process right now of writing the second Shakti Girls. Um, I actually just um, got off the phone with, um, you know, my my small but mighty team who helped me put the first Shakti Girls together. And so yeah, I'm in the process of researching and writing. About, I'm about halfway through. Um, it is, um, you know, it, it's a lot to write these poems, you know, and, and I love the process. I love the writing. The research is, I mean, it's so inspiring to go in. I mean, I can research their lives and read their stories for hours. Um, but it takes, uh, it definitely takes, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I try, I'm trying to not rush through the process is, um, um, what I'm trying, you know, my, my hope is to not rush, you know, to get to the end result, but to really take my time and give the women, you know, the time that they deserve to really get their story right and the poem right for my audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, we have, we've touched on the pictures a little bit, but the illustrations are beautiful. Can you talk a little bit about those illustrations and also the artist that did them, um, Kavita Rajput? Yes. So Kavita Rajput, she was amazing to work with and she did a phenomenal job with the, with the work. She approached the, the illustrating, um, using a very like traditional style. She hand painted and hand drew everything and then went back and emphasized with some digital work. And it was, um, in talking with her in the beginning, Actually, our first meeting was the a year before, exactly a year before the book came out, March 6th, 2022. And within like 30 minutes of our conversation, I knew right away she was the right person for the job. She understood the mission, the purpose of why I was writing Shakti Girls. Um, and so, and so, and I knew that she was going to really pour her heart into this book. And, and she did exactly that. And we talked a lot about really capturing um, historical, traditional Indian elements into the artwork. And so the cover and the the back cover and even throughout the interior pages, you'll find um, floral motifs. And those flowers are traditional um, historical mogul flowers, um, the mogul dynasty. And so if like you go to the Taj Mahal or if you look up, you know, uh, mogul art, you'll see there's a specific style of flowers that are always drawn. And so we wanted to incorporate those flowers, which are, you know, such a distinct part of Indian history into the book. Um, and so that was, you know, we, we definitely wanted that touch of Indian history represented in the illustrations. Um, and then, you know, the title has Shakti Girls has that horizontal line above each letter. That's the, the Shiro Reka. Um, and that is, you know, that line you'll see, um, in, in all of Hindi, right? When in all the characters and how Hindi is written, the dominant language in, in India, it's got that, that line above. So I thought that was a really great way to sort of capture, 
um, you know, the, the Indian culture and one of its main languages. And then the, the color of the book as well, it's in that, um, sort of that emerald green color. And that was, um, something I really wanted because I knew it was one of the feminist colors. Um, also one that, you know, embodies nature, you know, I feel very much at peace and at ease with the color green. And I remember, I think it was several years ago, um, during the Me Too movement, um, there were, um, many, you know, prominent, uh, Hollywood, um, uh, women from Hollywood, producers, directors, actors who attended the Oscars, and they were all wearing emerald. Um, and so, and, and, and it was actually, that was the first time I, I learned and I realized that emerald, that green is another color of, um, of feminism. And so I was like, I, I want to bring that color into the book as well. It's also the color of intelligence. And so, um, so there was, you know, purpose and reason really behind all the different, you know, artistic elements of the book. I know I already said this, but I really, really love all of the thought that went into every detail, every aspect of the book. Um, it's really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, I, it was a definitely a labor of love. Um, and it was also a really cathartic process as well. Um, you know, I, I definitely wrote it for the next generation. Um, and actually one of the, the, uh, one of the, the big pushes to like have me like buckle down and write was when I shared the idea with a friend and I was terrified because, you know, it, the idea had been in my mind for a, a long time, but to like get it out there in, your, in the universe was terrifying. But I told a close friend of mine that, you know, I have this idea. I don't know if I should do it. And she was like, stop everything you're doing. I've known you since you're five years old. You can do this. And if you're not going to do it, for yourself or for your own kids, do it for my daughter, my five-year-old daughter who needs a book like this. And when she said that, I, I was like, Abs okay, I need to just buckle down and, and write this book. Um, cause she, I then realized that there is this next generation, um, that, that needs a book, just like how I needed a book like this when I was a kid. And, um, and so that, that really, you know, that really pushed me to eventually get the writing going and putting everything together. But the process was incredibly cathartic and healing for myself as well. I think whenever you are part of a solution to a problem that's been bothering you, it can be, it can be very healing. And so, um, so yes, um, yeah, there was a lot of thought that went behind the, the every little detail of this book, I, I wanted to put a book out there that, um, that the, you know, children, all children could be proud of, would be drawn to. I wanted children from, you know, who, do, who couldn't feel like they could connect with um, the women, maybe different backgrounds. I wanted them to pick up the book and feel enticed to read it and to learn about a different part of the world, to see through and step through a window outside of their own. And so I knew it was important to really, you know, to really think through all those details um, and put something that children could be proud of holding. I really, truly do love the amount of thought that went into those details, as I have said in other places during this interview, but it is um, wonderfully well thought out, well put together, uh, and beautifully done. So let's go ahead and take our final break of this episode. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the responses that the book has received. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Pets bring such joy to our lives, and the GSMC Pets Podcast is here to share in that joy. We'll tell stories of pets finding their forever homes, acting in unexpected ways, being helpful, or just being silly. Whether you love dogs, cats, llamas, reptiles, fish, or you've never met an animal you didn't like, the GSMC Pets Podcast is for you.
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Sheetal Shaw. I completely resonated when you said, you know, you thought about doing this, you wanted to do this, you were terrified about doing this. Um, sometimes part of that process is just taking that first step to actually do it. And it's wonderful that you had the friend to encourage you in that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, it's ever, since the books come out, I've had an outpouring of support to keep going. Um, you know, there are, there are days, you know, when you're a new author, a debut author, it can be a scary world <laughs> to step into. Um, especially, you know, if you're not familiar with the world, there's a lot that I've had, I had to, I've had to learn in the past, uh, nine months. And so there are days where I'm like, Oh, did I do the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? I'm not sure. But every time I go to an event or I, you know, um, at a school, you know, I'm reminded of how important it is to have books like this that represent, that affirm, but also um, give a window to children um, how badly these books are, are needed. And so, you know, when I hear uh, when I hear from parents um, that they're grateful and they are, are so looking forward to the next one. I had one dad, I was at a, a, a literature festival and he came back to my table, I think three or four times wanting more copies of the book. And I could tell, um, he, you know, was feeling emotional. Um, and he said, he said, I know exactly why you wrote this book because we didn't have books like this when we were kids. And when he said that, I got choked up because <laughs> um, not only what, you know, is he buying this for his kids or, you know, he's wanting his daughters to and his nieces to have what we didn't have. But I think we were both healing in the process of, you know, in this process of now doing something for the next generation. So, um, so, so, Yeah. <laughs> I, I can only imagine he kept thinking of more people he could buy it for. That's why he kept coming back. Exactly, exactly. And I think his wife was like, oh, go back and get more. We we have this niece and that niece and, and the volley's coming up. Absolutely. Oh, yes. We're almost, we're almost at Diwali. It's a perfect gift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we are. I can't believe this year is going by so fast. I, it's, yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> From your own experience, and you, you know, you, you, it has been a learning process for you. Obviously, what advice would you give for someone who might want to write a book or just write in general? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, I, for me, one of the, you know, I, I've always known since I was a kid that I have this love for writing. Um, you know, I, I used to write poetry. You know all the time when I was a kid, I used to pretend they were song lyrics that that was not a good idea. I should have just stuck to poetry. But um, from a young age, you know, I, I had this just this draw towards stories and writing. And so I always knew in the back of my mind that one day I would write a book. Um, and I think one of the challenging parts in writing a book was not knowing what to write about, you know, what, what my story was, you know, I, yeah, I'd had a lot of story ideas, but when it came down to sitting down to write, um, you know, I would often, f f you know, freeze up. And so, you know, I think it was when I took time to kind of look within myself and listen to what really mattered to me and, you know, what was really, you know, churning my emotions and firing up. And that's when I started realizing this is what I need to write about. You know, this is what really matters to me. And so writing for a purpose, having a mission behind my writing was a huge motivator to help me push through any uncertainty that I felt, any doubts that I felt, about whether or not I should do this. Am I the right person for this? You know, do I belong in this space? Like all those doubts, 
I was able to put behind me because I knew this book mattered. I knew it had purpose. I knew it had to be out in the world. And so, so that really, you know, that, that really helped me kind of get myself out of my own way. Um, and then, you know, really being patient with the story. And so, you know, I mentioned before with the next volume of Shakti Girls, I, I, I don't want to rush through it. Um, you know, I write and then I take a break. I go back to edit. I do that many times. I bring on a professional editor to help me knowing where my strengths are and where I'll need support. I think that's a really important part of the process as well. And I knew that if I'm, and I, you know, I indie published Shakti Girls, I self-published and I knew that if in order for me to do that well, I have to be honest about, you know, where I'll need support and where I'll need to build a team to help me through the process and put out um, a, a, a strong, compelling book. Yeah, the team, I think, is so important. As you mentioned, you have that small but but important group that has helped you really through figure things out, right? Yeah, definitely. I had an editor, an illustrator. Um, I had someone help me with marketing. And then I even had a lawyer. Um, I can't say everyone needs a lawyer, but for me, writing a nonfiction um, and doing this for the first time, I wanted to, you know, make sure that I had all my T's crossed, my I's dotted, I was on the right track. Um, and so for me, having a lawyer help me through all that was was really important. Yes, you don't always think about those things. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's good information. When you take the time to read just for you, um, who are your favorite authors and um, what are some of your favorite genres? Yeah, it really, it's funny. It kind of depends on my mood. Um, you know, I, during the, you know, if I'm on vacation, I definitely want a light read, um, um, something fun. Um, and so I actually just finished reading The Love Match by Priyanka Taslim. Um, really enjoyed that book. It's, you know, uh, sort of a, a rom, um, rom-com, you know, sort of a type book. Um, and I just really enjoyed it and loved the cultural connections and learned a little bit more about, um, Bangladeshi culture as well. And so, uh, really enjoyed that book, but now I've completely switched gears and I'm reading a book by, um, psychologist, Dr. Lisa Damore. And she writes a lot about um, parenting and raising teenagers. And I was first introduced to her work as an educator. Um, and, you know, she had written a lot of books about, you know, raising girls and educating girls, especially through the teenage years. And so I, I've always found her work to be really instrumental as to me as an educator, um, as, you know, an advisor to many young girls. And I've just continued to read her work as a parent. Um, and also, you know, this is, you know, an area that I'm clearly really passionate about. So, um, so I kind of like go back and forth, um, between, you know, fiction, you know, uh, some romance to nonfiction parenting. And then I'll probably, I think my next book that, um, I might want, I'm kind of in the mood for like a murder mystery. That might be my next book. So I'll jump around depending on my mood. I like a lot of variety. That is apparent. I mean, I'm I'm just (laughs) smiling from the, from the psychology and the raising of teenagers to murder mystery, you know. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I just got, I got to keep myself, you know, engaged and on my toes, you know, I got to mix it up. I love it. Um, How about social media and internet presence? Um, If you have a website, please share that. And then any social media that you are active on. Sure. So my website is www.shetal, S-H-E-T-A-L dash Shaw, S-H-A-H dot com. And I post all like my uh, blog articles, all my writings, um, podcasts, all of that is there. And then I'm mostly active on Instagram. So my handle is at sheetal.shaw.writes. Um, but you can also find me on Facebook 
as well. Um, I've just dipped my toe in TikTok. I don't know if that'll last, um, but I've had some young folks in my life tell me I should give it a try. So we shall see <laughs> where that goes. It's an interesting place. So I will say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a little scared. I'm like, I'm scared that I might get sucked in and I won't know when to stop. Because, <laughs> I mean, an hour will go by. I'm like, oh, gosh, I was supposed to use that hour to write. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk to me about the book and the inspiration for the book and um, answer all my my nosy questions. I so appreciate it. No, thank you so much for having me on. It was such a joy talking to you and getting to know you a little bit better. Thank you once again to Sheetal for joining me for this interview to share this book with me and so I can share it with you uh, along with the creation of the book and everything that went into that. Thank you so much. Um, as you probably guessed, I really, really enjoyed this book. I want to give it to several young women in my life that I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe you can think of not just young women, um, any, any young people in your life who you think would enjoy this. We talked a little bit about Diwali there in the interview and I have absolutely no idea if Diwali is an occasion for giving gifts. I need to do more research on Diwali. Uh, that is on my list of things to do. I know it's coming up, but you also know me and you know that I will give gifts for any occasion, including, you know, Tuesday. <laughs> so <laughs> with Diwali coming up or with the holidays coming up, there's lots and lots of holidays coming up between now and the end of the year. Maybe, you know, some people who would really enjoy this book, who would really enjoy learning some new words, some empowering words, learning about some amazing women who did some incredible things in their lives. And then these poems might inspire them to learn more about those women or look up other women who were in similar fields or have similar interests to the person reading the book. At any rate, there's a lot of reasons why you should pick up this book. Maybe you just want to read it. Maybe you like to find hidden things in pictures and read poetry along with that. Whatever that reason is, go out and find yourself a copy of Shakti Girls, and I think you'll be very, very pleased that you did. So thank you to Sheetal again for joining me. Thank you, as always, to you for joining me for this episode. I hope that you will join me for the next interview when I have returning author Mary Kelikoa coming back. We are going to talk about um, the second book in a series, Deadly Tides. She was here before to talk about the first book in this series. So I'm looking forward to having her back on the podcast and hope you will join me for that episode. In the meantime, as you already know, there are several several things that you can do if you are feeling in a very helpful mood right now uh, to help get this podcast out to more listeners. I greatly appreciate everything that you do just by listening to this podcast, but if you wish to do a few things more, you can like, subscribe, follow, what have you on the podcast, on the platform that you listen to the podcast on. That way you'll always know when there are new episodes and it does help. You can also leave a review, written, starred, what have you, Regardless, it helps. It can be a one sentence review. It can be a wordy paragraph. It can be constructive criticism. It can be a glowing review. Whatever is inspiring you to be, to write, I appreciate it. Thank you in advance. <laughs> and also social media. Um, I always love hearing from listeners, so you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Come tell me what you're reading. Oh, if you celebrate Diwali, tell me what that celebration looks like. Tell me what the traditions are in your family, especially since it's coming up. What are you doing this year? Are there books that feature Diwali? I've read one. It was a romance and it took place at Diwali and it was very cute and I liked it. Um, I think it was called Holly Jolly Diwali. <laughs> um, so, you know, I love, I love holiday themed books. So if there are other books that you read because they were, I don't know, just tell me, please come tell me. <laughs> Is that enough begging? Please, please tell me what you're reading. At any rate, yes, you can do all of those things and it helps to get the podcast out to more listeners. And I thank you in advance and I greatly appreciate you as always. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Regardless of the, what that week involves, I really, really hope that you find plenty of time to get yourself lost in plenty of good books. Thank you so much. 
You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.